Matching shots in color grading is essential for making your video look good. Here's the simplest way to do it in DaVinci Resolve. First thing you gotta do is click on the link in the description. That'll give you access to our Media Vault. And there is a place here called Color Grading Practice Footage, where you can download a zip file that has all of this footage in it. Take this footage, drag it into the media pool of a new project in Resolve and hit change. Then select all of it, right click and say, create new timeline using selected clips. Hit create, switch over to color, and oh baby, you are ready to go. This will give you a bunch of random clips where you can practice your color grading, all shot in different color spaces on different cameras. And the first thing we're gonna do is color manage this stuff. I have a few videos on color management. Search my channel if you're not familiar with that. But basically how it works is I'm gonna go down here to my project settings, click on this settings cog, go over to color management, switch this color science to DaVinci Wide RGB color managed, uncheck automatic color management, select HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and hit save. Then, depending on what kind of camera I shot with, I'm gonna go in and tag the color spaces of my different shots. And we did a really convenient thing and labeled each of these with the color space that we used. So this is Sony S-Log3, so I can hold shift and select both of these clips, right click and say input color space, Sony, S-Log3, Cine, S-Log3, like that. And that's going to color manage my shot and make this look not log. Do similar things for the other shots. So this is RA Log C3, RA Log C3. This one's Panasonic V-Log. This one's Canon C-Log 2. These are all Rec. 709. This one is BMD Film Gen 5. And this one is Red Log 3G 10. Once we've tagged all of our color spaces, everything should look decent here in the viewer and not gray, nasty log. I'm gonna hide our mini timeline here as well as our gallery. So we have a little bit more room. So once we have all of our shots color managed, we can start working on matching them. So coming up with your creative look and color correction, making things look right and matching, they sort of can happen all at the same time. Generally what you do is you do color management and then you come up with your look. And you usually come up with your look on what we call a hero shot. A hero shot is a shot that has some common elements with other shots in the scene. So if we were gonna match these four shots together, shots eight through 11, I might pick shot nine, and I'll just push up this offset so we can see what the heck is happening here. I might pick shot nine because it has a lot of the common elements that are in the other shots. I'll just shift click all of these and then middle button mouse click here so we can just brighten these all. See this, we have her skin and her shirt and her jeans and the inside of the car. Here we have skin and the inside of the car, skin, shirt, inside of the car, skin, shirt, inside of the car, hair, right? This shot kind of has everything that the other shots have or most of the things. And so this is a good shot to kind of set our look on. Now, oftentimes you would do these in group nodes or in the timeline nodes or something like that. I'm just gonna keep it really simple and just make a couple of nodes here. We'll just call this look. And then we're gonna use what we call our ecto node graph here. E for exposure, Alt S to make a new serial node, right click, contrast, Alt S, temperature, set, and then other stuff. Then we're gonna have the look on top of that. And so one thing that we need to fix here is our exposure. So I'm just gonna push this up a little bit, just take our offset up and make this a little bit brighter. I'm also gonna take this opportunity just to shift click all of these and middle button mouse click here on shot nine. So we have all of our nodes just copied over. Now I'm not gonna do much for the look. I'll probably just do a little bit of an S curve and maybe push this just a little bit blue in the temperature, something like that. That's gonna be our look. Again, I could probably just middle button mouse click, copy that over. So once we have our look established for the scene, whether you do this in these exact nodes or not, really the main workflow here is you wanna make your hero shot look good. That's the first step. So we're going to adjust different parts of this hero shot, shot nine, to look how we want. So for the exposure, I think I might take this down just a touch. It's a little bit bright. I might just take the gain up a little bit. That looks nice. Take the lift down just a touch. We'll go to contrast and let's just play with the contrast. I'll push, push that up a little bit, change the pivot around. I think I like it somewhere in there. Temperature and saturation. I feel like that looks pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna do much with it. And then as far as other stuff, 
Possibly we could darken different parts of this, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. We have the main parts of our shot looking good. I'll just select all of these and hit control D. And so this is just the look on it. And then this is with our adjustments. So this right here, this is kind of the target that I'm going for. I want all my shots to look like this. So what I can do is right click in the viewer and say, grab still. What that's going to do is add a still over here in my gallery. I'll just get rid of these extra ones real quick. And what this is going to let me do is play this still on top of other shots. So if I click on this little button right here, this wipe button, that's going to play my selected still and I can wipe this back and forth to match it. Now I'm probably not going to match it to this shot because it's not really from the same project, but it's definitely going to be helpful for these other shots. So now I could switch to say shot 10 and I can look at a split screen comparison between these and I can pretty easily tell what needs to happen here. So for instance, one big thing is that the blacks in this shot are too lifted. So in my exposure, I think what I'll do, maybe just take the offset down. Let's just see how that looks. I'll just push that offset down and I'm kind of just matching my scopes here. You can see as I move my offset around, we have this split. And what I really want to do is just kind of match this up here. And I can kind of do that somewhere in there, just looking at the scopes. And then it happens to work pretty well this way too. Yeah, that looks pretty good. One of the biggest things that you can do is fix the exposure so that the exposure on both shots are the same. That's going to make the biggest difference. Now let's look at other elements here. We have her skin and I would say that looks pretty similar. I'd say that looks pretty good. So the question is, do these feel like they live in the same world? A great test for this is not only to do the split screen thing, but turn that off and just flip in between them like this. Do these feel like they match? And if you can do it quickly and it's not offensive, then it's probably good enough to move on, at least for now. You might decide later that maybe one needs a little bit more saturation or a little more contrast, but overall, I feel like those match pretty well. Now let's go to shot 11 and let's compare these. So shot 11 definitely has those lifted blacks, same kind of thing. Let's open up our split here. And I wonder if this is gonna be pretty much the same idea as shot 10. And so what I'll do, is just middle button mouse click on shot 10 and see if we get a closer match. That looks pretty good. So the exposure I would say is almost there. I would say that it maybe needs a little bit more brightness here in shot 11. And so maybe I'll take the gain up just a touch. Yeah, see kind of this and this are looking similar. We get some highlights on her face, it has that kind of silvery look. Yeah, I like that. The other thing I would say is this shot is maybe just a little bit too pink. So I'll go to the temperature and saturation, I'll take this tint and just push this a little bit green, just a little bit. Yeah, I feel like that's working a little bit better. Again, let's take off our split and we'll just go in between the hero shot and this shot. We do want to compare these shots eventually, but when we're doing our initial match, we always want to compare it with the hero shot or else what'll happen is this shot and this shot will look similar. This shot and this shot will look similar. Uh, but you know, it's kind of like telephone. When you get to the end of your sequence, the last shot and the first shot don't look anything alike. <laughs> so this definitely looks a little too green, I would say, when we go back and forth. So let's maybe dial that back and push the temperature maybe a little blue too. Let's go in between those. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Still a little purple, I would say. Just take that, I'd say that looks pretty good. Something to mention too, is that when you switch to a new shot, your first impression of the shot is probably what's right because pretty quickly your eyes kind of get used to the shot and you start to justify things. But if I switch to this shot, I look at it for a second, switch to this one. If there's nothing offensive, don't worry about it. Now we'll go in between these two. Those look pretty good too. These all look pretty good together. All right, now shot eight. That's obviously a big problem, right? The darker parts aren't as dark. This is kind of green, needs a little more contrast. So again, let's just try out these different grades. So I could try nine, 10, 11, ooh, maybe 11. Yeah, maybe 11. This is looking a little bit green, so I'll take this temperature, take that green out. And let's go to our split again. There we go. Let's say this exposure Let's maybe take that lift down just a touch. Maybe push just a little contrast in there too. Can play with the pivot a little bit. Now she's kind of in different lighting situations here, but we still want those to feel the same, especially on her hair. 
especially the inside of the car. I want that all to feel pretty darn similar. I'd say that looks pretty good. There's maybe just a little green still in this one. So we'll just take a little bit of green out and maybe push a little blue in there. Let's see what that looks like. Let's take this off and we'll go in between these shots. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now we should be able to go in between the shots and they should all feel like they live in the same world. I can't stress enough the flipping in between the shots thing. You should be able to flip in between any of these shots and they should feel like they match. And if they don't, again, it's probably your first impression that's going to be different. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's eight through 11. Let's uh, work on these two shots here, shots one and two. Move my camera down here so we can see. So this one is shot really well. This one is a little bit underexposed. So we're gonna do kind of the same thing. I'll just middle button mouse click on shot nine. And then let's just reset all these node grades. That look, yeah, I think I like that look. It's just a little bit of an S curve there. That's good. And then let's middle button mouse click here. So we just have the look on both of these. Again, this look might go on a group post clip or it might go on an adjustment clip, but you can just put it at the end of the chain if you want to. And so let's pick our hero shot. I think I like this shot for our hero shot. And we wanna make sure this looks good. I would say, let's maybe just add a little gain. I'd say that looks nice. As far as the contrast, maybe push the contrast up a touch. Play with the pivot a touch. Take the temperature and saturation. I think take this a little bit further from green and a little bit warm, just a little bit. So here's without that and here's with it, okay? Right click, grab a still. Now we're gonna to switch to our second shot and we'll play the still like this. And what we want is to match these. Now, something to mention is that if you don't have similar subjects in your frame, so for instance, we have this kind of desert plain looking thing here, and we have just kind of rocks and trees on this side. So those are going to be darker, and that's okay that they're darker because they're different subjects, right? We don't want to push this around to where this really feels like it's exactly the same because it just doesn't need to be exactly the same. Like it's okay for these rocks to be darker than this grass. That said, this doesn't look terrible. It's actually a little bit better match just because that exposure matches a little bit better. But we aren't gonna go that crazy. I am gonna push, just push my offset up a little bit to where I'm matching the skin tones, right? So I want this skin and this skin to be similar. They don't have to be exactly the same, but they have to be kind of in the same world. So I mean, somewhere in there maybe. So here's before and here's after, just really pushing that up. This contrast, let's take a little bit of contrast and push that in, change our pivot around. Now we're getting somewhere where this skin just looks similar. It's a little bit darker on this side, but that's okay. It's a little bit of a darker shot, but I think for the most part, it looks pretty good. You'll also notice that the brighter parts back here, the things that would match are starting to match. So this green, this green, these kind of tan, this tan, that's starting to match a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Now let's take a look at the temperature. Maybe, maybe we can push this just away from green a little. Good. Maybe just a little warm. We also have the end of his nose pretty bright here. So what we might do is just take the gain down a touch here and push up the gamma just a little bit, just so we don't blow out his nose too much. And then we can take the lift. So we push up the gamma, take down the lift a little bit. We can kind of push and pull that until those start to feel like they belong in the same world. All right, now here's the test. We flip back and forth. Here's one, here's the other. Do those feel like they live in the same world? Even though the background is dark here and this background is bright, do they feel like they could be really facing each other? And I think they can. I feel like that works pretty well. So we get similar tones on the face and the nose and the clothing and the hats. Those are all feeling similar. One thing that we could do in our other would be to make a window here and just kind of make a soft circle mask and set it to outside. That means that everything that we do is gonna be outside of this circle. What we can do is add a little bit of gain, just kind of reset this to brighten that background. So we'll take this gain up a little bit, maybe push up the saturation a touch. There we go. Maybe a little contrast. So now we have this kind of sunny look, just like we have in the other shot, but it's not too bright on his face, okay? So that really feels a lot better. 
man. So that's pretty much the idea of matching your shots. You get one shot looking how you want, make that your hero shot, and then compare all the other shots to it. You can use the wipe feature to get it pretty darn close, but the real test is going to be if you flip in between the shots, do they feel like they match? If you can do that and you accept that they're in the same world, then you're probably doing pretty good when it comes to matching. Hey, download this footage and follow along, okay? There's a link down in the description or I'll put one right there and that's how we'll do it. Then you can learn how to match shots and do some do color grading for your videos. I hope that's helpful. I think this is I think this is a pretty good skill to have. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>